Additive Color, Part 2. Now there's lots of ways of organizing um, color in different types of color maps or systems. Uh, very common ones are uh, color wheels. And, and each of these has its own um, utility, uh, but we want to have some type of scientific way of organizing color that helps us uh, make predictions about color. Now, uh, Isaac Newton, who uh, studied mechanics and gravity and calculus and all that, uh, he spent a lot of time uh, studying color, and he did some of the first experiments with prisms and, and such to separate the spectra, and uh, he organized color in the same way as painters in his uh, time did, which was in a color wheel. So even though the spectrum was a straight line, he formulated a color wheel and the two ends of the spectrum are connected by the uh, parts of the uh, colors which are the non-spectral colors, um, most notably uh, magenta. Now we understand uh, from trichromatic theory uh, how this works, that we have these uh, three um, uh, sensitive um, uh, perceptors of uh, different parts of the spectrum, and then uh, depending on uh, the relative excitement of Ron, Greg, and Biff, uh, we perceive uh, different colors uh, from uh, different spectra. Now, of course, uh, there aren't really uh, three guys uh, in your eye that are sending the signal to the brain. It's actually uh, photosensitive cells, uh, which are called uh, cones. The cones are the ones that are sensitive to different wavelengths of light uh, um, so that you perceive uh, color. Uh, there's also the rods, which um, are only sensitive to brightness and not to um, wavelengths. So uh, the cones uh, on, on the retina uh, receive light and depending on um, their uh, stimulation, they send a color signal to the brain. Now, these uh, three cones are actually labeled uh, short, medium, and long, uh, corresponding to the ranges of wavelengths. So the short cone is sensitive uh, to the blue part of the spectrum, which is the shortest wavelengths, uh, the medium cone more towards uh, the green, and uh, the long uh, over towards the red. Now you see from these spectral sensitivity curves that there's a significant overlap and they're not entirely symmetric. Uh, the eye is not um, a geometrically perfect uh, optical instrument, uh, so uh, we don't have a geometrically perfect uh, color wheel. Instead, uh, here's a uh, diagram showing uh, how we interpret uh, the uh, resulting color uh, given the trichromatic uh, signal. So if we uh, map here the amount of uh, excitement of the red cone as a percentage of the total, and then the put that on the horizontal axis, the green cone on the vertical axis, we don't have to uh, have another axis for the blue cone because uh, the three of them have to add up to 100%. So the blue cone is 100% uh, minus whatever the red and the green uh, excitement is. So when we uh, formulate this, because the, the curves have some overlap, uh, this turns out to be not a circular wheel, but more of this sort of horseshoe-shaped horseshoe uh, object. Now, to understand how to uh, read this map, uh, you'd say, well, if the tri-stimulus values, uh, if the, um, what, what we'll call the red cone, uh, if the red cone is 50% uh, of the excitement and the green cone is 40%, uh, which means the blue must be just 10%, uh, that is 
a value of uh, 0.5 in the horizontal axis, uh, 0.4, which is 40%, in the vertical axis, then we read off this um, map and we see that lands in the region of orange. So when we're looking at orange, that is the uh, set of tri-stimulus values. Now we can go around and actually assign uh, color names to these uh, various regions in this uh, map. Uh, the central part is uh, perceived as white and we have different parts which are perceived as green and yellow green and so forth. Uh, here I've uh, marked an area which is 50% uh, red cone, 25% green, 25% blue and that happens to land in a region which is labeled uh, pink. Now this diagram is a very useful way of organizing uh, our perception of color because with additive um, color uh, we can predict the color that will be seen when we combine uh, spectra from two different light sources. So if we have a green light uh, and a red light and we see the two of them uh, simultaneously, if we see them in, in uh, equal proportion, then the color that's perceived is the one which is in the middle, which is yellow. Uh, if we uh, turn down the red light and turn up the green light, then this point moves over towards the green and then it passes to yellow green and um, if we go the other way it goes over towards the orange if we turn up the red light and turn down the green light. Let's see this in action with some uh, actual lights. So here you see I have a red light and a green light and you'll see here in a moment a blue light so those are shining on a on a screen. Now we go back and turn on the red light and turn on the green light and I can adjust them uh, to about equal proportion and we have a nice yellow in the middle. We turn off the green, uh, sorry, turn off the red and turn on the blue now the part in the middle there is a uh, cyan and uh, now we'll, we turn the red back on. So the part in the middle of there where it's both red and blue light, we see that as magenta. And uh, now turn all of them on and try to get equal proportions and you see we have um, white in the middle where we are looking at simultaneously uh, red, green, and blue. So as I was saying, when we turn on the uh, blue light and turn on the red light, uh, if we have equal proportions there, uh, then we see uh, magenta as the color. That is a uh, color addition of blue and red. Well, you can see that uh, by having just uh, three different lights, I can cover uh, a large gamut in uh, this color space. So I can't reach every single uh, visible color, but I actually cover a fairly large area just using um, uh, a red light, a green light, and a blue light. And of course, uh, the closer these lights are to the corners, uh, the more uh, area is covered and the larger the gamut of colors. Now this is uh, used in uh, RGB uh, or red, green, blue uh, pixel displays. So uh, here you see a blow up of the uh, sub pixels of um, red, green, and the, the blue pixels in this case are turned off. So when you see simultaneously uh, the red and green uh, pixels, uh, you're going to see a, a yellowish color. In this case, the red ones are turned on a little brighter than the green 
and so that uh, yellow is towards the uh, orange uh, yellow. Now this uh, diagram also allows us to map out uh, additive color complements. So uh, the center point is white and the two colors on opposite sides are additive color complements, which means that, uh, for example, if we have a blue light and a yellow light, uh, if we turn them both on, we land in the middle, which is uh, white, uh, and so forth with the other combinations. Uh, cyan is the additive complement of red, and magenta is the additive complement of green. Uh, you see this used in, for example, in uh, anaglyph uh, glasses, which are the glasses which are used to see uh, 3D images using a projection of uh, two images, one with uh, red and the other one with cyan, for example. Uh, and uh, the other types of 3D glasses uh, use the other uh, color complements. Another common one is green magenta, and the somewhat less common one is uh, blue-yellow. Now, uh, I should mention that uh, color subtraction uh, works differently, and we have color subtraction when we uh, mix uh, different colored pigments like red paint and blue paint. So in that case, the uh, resulting color is not the same as when we are adding uh, lights. So uh, instead, when we mix uh, red paint into blue paint, uh, the mixtures lie on uh, what's typically a rather complicated uh, curve, so it's not a straight line um, uh, between those two uh, points, and often that line uh, goes over towards the uh, white point, although because it's um, subtractive, it turns out to be a, a dark uh, color as opposed to being uh, white. So here's an example. Uh, we take pure ultramarine blue and pure cadmium red. When we do a 50-50 mix, we get this very dark uh, blackish um, um, brownish color. So um, certainly uh, don't get a magenta. Uh, now this, is, this will be discussed um, much more detail in uh, another tutorial on subtractive color. Uh, now it is possible to uh, use additive color with uh, paint if uh, you paint in the style of plantalism. So here we have a classic example of that from uh, this painting by Georges Seurat. And when you look at a close-up of this painting, you see that instead of uh, mixing uh, pigments together, uh, he actually used tiny dots and uh, somewhat similar to an RGB uh, color display, when you see the uh, dots uh, very close together, they blend together uh, and you perceive uh, the additive uh, color. Um, and one advantage of this is that uh, you have much greater saturation than uh, you get when you actually uh, mix the paint. So in uh, summary, there's uh, three types of cone cells in uh, the uh, retina of the eye, and they uh, send a color signal to the brain. Uh, the CIE diagram maps the perceived color in terms of the tri-stimulus values, uh, basically the x-coordinate being the stimulation of the red cones and the y-coordinate being the stimulation of the green cones. Uh, this uh, diagram allows us to predict the color that results from adding uh, colored lights. Uh, there's a wide range of colors uh, called a gamut, the gamut of colors, that you can reach uh, using only uh, red light, green light, and uh, blue light. And finally, additive color complements are the colors that are on opposite sides of the white point on the uh, CIE diagram. Uh, now there's more to color than what we've discussed here, 
Uh, we've not said anything about um, saturation or value, uh, in other words, brightness of a, of a color. What we've essentially focused on at this point is just the hue. So in the next tutorials, we'll uh, go into more detail of some of these other elements. Oh, and by the way, mixing paint pigments is not additive color. It is subtractive color, and we'll discuss that in another uh, tutorial as well.